Coming up, I'll be joined by the president and CEO of Lightbridge to discuss recent nuclear energy news out of the White House. Powering the future of AI, where is that going to come from? The watch list will be right back. Welcome back to the watch list. I'm Nicole Petalides. We're live on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. We have a few movers for you right now in the market. Shares of PDD Holdings falling today, missing the analyst estimates on both the top and bottom line for first quarter earnings. And the team who parents saw profits fall nearly 50 percent year over year, affected by both U.S. tariffs and weak consumer sentiment in China. PDD Holdings did not mention impacts from tariffs, instead blaming both the external environment and ecosystem investments for the disappointing quarter. All right, turning our attention over to energy. What's going to power AI, right? The latest in nuclear energy. Some of the news that came out of the White House has been very important. Seth Gray, president and CEO of Lightbridge, joining us right now. Thank you so much for being with us as we need more and more power. And nuclear is definitely uh, something that's being considered in a big way. At the same time, we've heard from the White House. Before we get to some of the details, just tell folks what Lightbridge does. Yeah, it's great to be on with you again. And Lightbridge is developing advanced nuclear fuels that will increase the power output of the existing reactors and will improve the safety, overall improve the economics of both existing and new reactors. And we're working closely with Idaho National Laboratory where we're producing samples of the fuel that will start testing, we expect, early next year in their large uh, reactor there. So at this point now, what is coming out of the White House and what are your thoughts? On Friday, President Trump signed four executive orders that strongly support nuclear power and are designed to cut through regulation while maintaining safety and allow the United States to lead in not only powering industries of the future like AI, data centers that need constant power that nuclear can provide, but also compete and win internationally in a great power competition against Russia and China. And many of these executive orders align just very well with what Lightbridge is doing. So tell me more about Lightbridge going forward. I mean, you must have been happy to hear some of this, right? Well, well, we were very happy to hear it. And so what we're doing going forward that aligns very well with these executive orders is we're going to be, you know, in the very near term, um, producing new fuel samples with uranium enrichment in them, qualifying them with Idaho National Laboratory, having the whole plan approved there for putting them in the reactor, and by early next year, have them go in the reactor and start generating the data that will go to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and will go to utilities that will be the customers that they need to, to license and commercially use the product. How much energy do you think can come or should come from nuclear? nuclear? Right now, it's about 19 percent, almost one-fifth of U.S. electricity. Countries with the highest percentage like France have about 72, 73 percent as a year-round average. I think in the United States, we have a diversified energy base. Not any one source will dominate that much. But I think nuclear, if it quadruples, as President Trump uh, is calling for it to do, um, that would, uh, say, grow to 80 percent if we didn't have electricity use growth in the country, but we're going to have tremendous growth in in power, in needs for electricity. So I think nuclear can approach 50 percent of all the electricity produced in the country. Oh, so that's more than double than where we are now for its use. Um, when you talk about what's needed for energy, I mean, that must keep you up at night because we hear more and more about AI and data centers and this and that and how we need more and more energy. Um, can, they can't do it without nuclear, right? I mean, they got to have some nuclear 
there. And um, I guess nuclear could take over, like other countries, to the 75 percent slot if needed. Is that right? I mean, how much energy do we need? I don't know if you have the exact numbers, but yeah. is it just so much more than we're currently using? And, you know, can you see nuclear really having a huge presence and saving the day almost? Yeah, I mean, think of it this way, um, sitting in New York right now, New York City, for all five boroughs, averages what's called five gigawatts of nuclear power that uses every day. There's one data center complex that Microsoft intends to plant, intends to build with OpenAI, um, a little campus of connected supercomputer buildings that will use eight gigawatts in this one little data center area. New York City is five. And there's going to be many, um, many right. data centers like that. So um, when we uh, say there's about um, what's called 100 uh, gigawatts of nuclear power in the United States right now, provided by almost 100 large reactors, to double, triple, quadruple that, um, we're looking at adding, um, you know, if you want to think of it this way, um, you know, each one of those reactors would only be about one fifth of what just that big data center would use. So it gives you the the, the notion of a hundred reactors in the U.S. and the U.S. about a hundred reactors of big power would would just power about twenty of those kind of data centers. It gives you the sense of the immense growth we need that renewables just can't provide at the constant power that never goes off that these that these companies will need. I also think about nat gas. Isn't that a big part of the energy, you know, yeah. providers? It is. As we, as we talked about last time, China made this huge bet on wind, solar, batteries, and the minerals needed for them. And, and I think in many ways they made the wrong bet, that those can all compete in the private sector in, in the United States, and there are places where they're definitely needed. But for the new industries that need massive amounts of constant power, it has to really come down to a combination of natural gas with nuclear. And it turns out the United States leads the world in natural gas, China you know, hardly as any, um, and we can compete and win on nuclear with these great new technologies like Lightbridge has and with political support like we see in the Congress from both parties and from the White House from President Trump. Do you find some of the other uh, sources of power when they say wind or solar, do those feel real to you or they don't have much merit because they're sort of depending well, on wind and solar? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think solar right now in the marketplace is more real than wind in terms of the economics. But in some places, like in Oklahoma, wind works well, but not enough that um, when you combine it with batteries that are still very expensive, that you can compete with big power plants like a gas plant or a nuclear plant for relying on constant power. You, you just can't really get there with renewables. Now, if you don't need constant power, you know, then that's OK. And there are some uses and they can be part of our electric grid. But the massive growth is what really needs a combination, I think, of nuclear with natural gas. So the stock, I know you don't comment much on stock price, but you're going into the Russell indices, that's a positive, and people, you know, the hedge fund manager, the fund managers all have to copy the index exactly, and those, that means they have to buy some of your stock. Coupled with the support of the White House, this stock has jumped, I mean, in six months, up 150 percent, month to date, up 80 percent, folks. Lightbridge is up 80 percent for this month of May. Um, you know, what say you as you get closer and closer to your highs of almost just under $17? Well, look, I think that um, what, what, what people are seeing is the progress we're making in the context of the marketplace that just needs more power in bipartisan, strong political support you know, with wind at our back and other nuclear companies. And, and I think that what makes Lightbridge really unique 
is that there are a lot of companies developing new reactors that don't have any reactors that exist yet, but we can fuel the existing reactors. Um, I, I think that is an enormous market for us of reactors that already exist that we're going to be targeting, as well as new reactors, of which they're just going to have to be a tremendous number built. And also we think well, our fuel will improve economics and be very helpful for those that are considering reopening old reactors that closed in the U.S., uh, as well as increasing the power and extending the licenses of ones that are already running. And that's really unique to Lightbridge Fuel, how we can bring that more power to existing plants. As I was thinking about whether or not you speak directly to President Trump or any other presidents of other countries, because you, we talked about how nuclear is even a bigger part of some of the other foreign countries, I was also thinking about partnerships and deals. And I know you're working closely with Oclo, potentially a, a nuclear f facilities, doing some reconnaissance of places. What's going on with that deal, that partnership study with Oclo? Yeah, and, and I did meet with President Trump in his first term, and we're in conversations with people in his administration now, as well as in the Congress. And with Oklo, we have an MOU. They are an excellent company to partner with. I, I think that we've really gotten to know each other as companies, including both working at Idaho National Laboratory. They are de designing a fast reactor and advanced reactor that's very different than the existing reactors and new reactors that Lightbridge will fuel. So we're not competitors, but we're both going to be using what's called high assay, low enriched uranium, along with zirconia metal in a metallic fuel. We will both need to have a facility that can store those materials, materials have what's called category two security licensed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, some personnel in common. So what we think and, and we're exploring very seriously is co-locating together our commercial scale fabrication facility to mass produce our products, uh, our fuels for, uh, for Oklo's reactors in their case and for existing reactors and new bigger and small modular reactors in our case, holding down the capital cost for both companies and deploying the facility, holding down the ongoing operating costs. And I think it's a very good partnership. And we're also looking together at our reprocessing and recycling technologies to deal with used uh, nuclear fuel and bringing it back to power reactors again in a cycle. So at this point now, are you feeling like demand is huge? Uh, you know what I mean as you have obviously partnerships in the works and you're, you know, deploying all kinds of nuclear energy and technology and whatever. Um, and the landscape is pretty busy. And you mentioned Oklo, right, as, the, as a partnership here. But um, with these executive orders, do you feel like demand is, is really, um, really good? Well, you know, it's funny. In the last three years, the United States went from the Biden administration supporting tripling nuclear power by 2050 globally to last year tripling nuclear power in the United States as well as overall globally to now the Trump administration supporting quadrupling nuclear power. So that's a lot of demand. And the way I used to think of it was the demand came from the utilities, that they pulled things through the supply chain. And that's why it's important to us to work closely with utilities. But now, in addition to the utilities, back behind them are these giant tech companies with multi-trillion dollar market caps looking to add more trillions. But the only way to do that is not only for them to get the data centers with the AI racks, but bring the power, bring cities worth of power to these data centers. So you see, for example, Constellation reopening uh, unit one at Three Mile Island nuclear power plant that it had closed because Microsoft provided a power purchase agreement. And I think you're going to see a lot more of that, that this incredible, massive demand of these giant companies they're realizing can only be met with nuclear as a significant part of that energy mix for, for the reliable power. Seth Gray, President, CEO, Lightbridge, thank you so much for joining us today on the show and explaining everything. 
We appreciate it. Big news here, and the stock, as we mentioned, soaring. Thank you very much. And going Thank into the so Russell much. indices. Thank you of Lightbridge.